I'll solve the um, title still. It's 538 in Australian terms. Let's go. Good to see you again, Miss Hartwood. Mrs. Thompson told me you were here. She also alerted me that you brought a detective with you. Very curious to hear what this is all about. You don't remember, do you, Miss Hartwood? We met at your family's house in the Garden District when your uncle was about to be admitted under my care. No, I remember. Sorry. I'm not really feeling well. Oh. Well, in that case, have a seat. Let me make you a drink. I don't seem to have made much of an impression on you. On the other hand, I can vividly recall you and your parents. Because of our cheerful disposition, I'm sure. You are far too intelligent to think that. You come from a joyless family, Miss Hartwood. The only amusement I took from my visit was discovering that the young lady's drink was an old fashioned. Very astute. Is that supposed to make you seem attentive or intelligent? Whatever you are you ready to tell me why you are here, Miss Hartwood? And why you brought a detective? I received a letter from my uncle. He seemed certain that he was in danger here. If I find out you're treating him badly, I'll be taking him back with me to New Orleans. Really? Is he going to live with you in your tiny garçonniere? That would be a spectacular way to ratify your spinsterhood. Because you are well aware that your father would never let him back in his house. No, I have it. Maybe you can bring him back up north. You've been wanting to move back for quite a few years, haven't you? You always preferred your mother's side of the family. Jeremy is free to leave with you. I won't object. However, there is one problem, as you might have learned. He is, in fact, missing. Do you know where he could have gone? No, I'm afraid I don't. I have my staff looking for him. I'm sure he will show up eventually. Especially if he learns that you are here. He is quite fond of you. What can you tell me about his condition? I never heard a proper diagnosis. What is your medical opinion of him? Well, let me think. He is an anxious man. Depressed, even. He suffers from a perceived lack of order in his inner and outer life. He constantly complains about events not presenting themselves according to their divine nature. In the dark man? Hard to tell if it was ever anything specific. Jeremy uses the dark man as a psychological scapegoat to avoid facing the truth that he is in any way at fault. You don't think there can be any truth to the dark man's supernatural existence? Why would you ask that? I... Can we ever be sure? If the Dark Man is some sort of evil presence that is in possession of Jeremy? Well... I assure you, any evidence that you experience supporting that claim is purely delusional. Don't get caught up in mass hysteria, Miss Hartwood. You wouldn't want to take your uncle's place in this hospital, would you? I'll be leaving now, Doctor. I need to keep looking for my uncle. Do so, Miss Hartwood. I'll let you know if he shows up. Chapter 2. Detective Carnby. God, I'm, I'm glad to see you. I was afraid you had left. Me? You're the one who just disappeared. It's... Hard to explain. I think I blacked out. I, it was like I went somewhere else. It's okay, miss. You're clearly upset. No, it's... I don't know what's happening. This is a very stressful situation for you, I understand. Ugh, no, you don't understand. Just take a deep breath. Why don't you sit down, smoke some of the perique. If you want, I could even drive you back to New Orleans. I just want to have a talk with Dr. Gray first. I want to stay. I found a talisman just like the one in the painting. I think I might be able to figure out where Tarawea is, where Jeremy wanted to go. That's great. Just stay out of trouble, okay? Let me handle the investigation. 
I'm not crazy, detective. Not yet. <laughs> okay, catch you later. Then maybe Jeremy is hiding in some strange other world, like Tarawea, the place he mentioned in the book. No matter where he is, it's clear that my search won't be limited to your setup. Oh, yeah. Can he push it? Okay, that's expensive for that time. Oh, I can see where this is going. I oh, know that clock's got something to do. Be opening 
looks sturdy. Now I'll be opening this. Yeah, found that ant letter. Dr. Elmore Lee Gray is DeSento's chief doctor. Accounting and all administrative work is handled by me, Paul Waits. Magdalena Thompson, or Mag oh! Jean Baptiste and Charlotte Tabois are responsible for keeping oh my God. documents in check. Finally, Jack Chance is our gardener, who can occasionally be seen in the conservatory, but is for the most part busy outside. There are currently six guests at DeSento. Malcolm McCarthy and Ruth Talamp reside on the first floor. Jeremy Harwood, Elizabetta Perosi, Grace Saunders, and of course, Cassandra Beauregard live on the second floor. Oh my god. Paul, oh, you're right about the plate. Oh, hell yeah. I'll be it for now.